and welcome back to Feel Good 101. My name is Emma Blackery and today I'm going to touch on the subject of depression. I could go on for hours and hours, but I've chosen not to. Instead, here is a 10 minute little video pack for you to take home with you. I'm going to try and approach this subject with as much tact as I can. However, I do use a lot of bad metaphors and I swear quite a lot. I'm very sorry, parents. Number one, I do feel as though I've had enough experience with depression, both personally and with friends and family, for me to talk about it. However, number two, I am not a professional. If you can get professional help, if you can see someone that knows really knows what they're talking about, then please do that. I'm not an alternative to that. I'm not going to talk about the basics of depression and things you can read from little pamphlets, because quite frankly, if you're here, you know what depression is. However, I'm going to talk about things that can help you along getting out of it and try and encourage you guys to seek professional help if you can. For those of you who don't really understand depression and still think it's just a mental doolally thing, I'm going to try and give you a little metaphor. Right. Imagine you are walking in a forest. You are alone. There is no one around. Then suddenly, bam! You trip down a well that wasn't clearly marked and you fall 60 foot down this well. You break your leg and now there's a heavy rock on your leg. You can't move and your leg is broken, you are in pain and all you can see is a little bit of light 60 foot above you which you can't reach, there's no ladder to climb back up so you are stuck down this well alone. That is what depression is in a metaphorical way. From here you have two options, I already said there was no one around so these are your options. You can wait for your broken leg to heal by itself in pain chip away at this rock and then climb up the well with your hands and just m fucking exhaust yourself. And number two, you can shout so loud and for so long until someone walks past and helps you and gives you a rope for you to climb back out. One is a difficult option and the other is a slightly easier option. Now I know it's difficult to tell people that you have depression, believe me, I know. Um, we're still living in an age where depression is very taboo, which really Oh, it shouldn't be in 2013. We feel like we can't tell our parents because they'll be angry at us or sad or disappointed. We can't tell our teachers because we're worried that they're going to tell our parents. We can't tell our friends because we think they're not going to understand and laugh at us. It shouldn't be that way. Unfortunately, it is, and we just have to deal with that. The good news is I don't think our children will have to deal with the same thing because I think we are going to grow up to be a lot more understanding of mental health issues. Hooray for them. Lucky bastards, huh? So when I say shout for help until someone gives you a rope, who can you tell about depression? Let's just go for a few people that you can tell. Okay, number one, your parents. Now, I'm not going to pretend I know your situation. You might have parents that are very angry at you and don't like you and hit you and hurt you. I don't know your situation. But if you feel like you can tell your parents, even if they'll be a little bit upset or disappointed, please try and tell them first. I think a lot of people... Not all, but a lot of people will be very surprised at how their parents can react to telling them you have depression. I didn't tell my parents I had depression, I've already been through this, but I told them after I came out of depression, I said, actually, I was depressed for about seven years, on and off. And they just looked at me and just went, why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you say anything? And they were more mad at the fact that I didn't tell them than they would have been if I did. Yeah? Okay, say you can't tell your parents, say that you are way too scared or they'll be really angry and think you're attention seeking. Okay, other close family members, do you have aunts, uncles, long lost cousins, do you have grandparents? Other people that you want to keep in the, f you know, you want to keep it in the family if you can um, because they'll be the most understanding, they love you, believe it or not, news flash. Okay. <laughs> However, if you also don't have any close family, you don't feel you can tell, there are people outside of your family that you can tell. Going on the basis that most of you are between 11 and 19, some of you are not, some of you are younger and older, I'm going to assume that you are in an educational facility, you're at school, college or university or adult education, whatever. You can tell your teacher. They might encourage you to tell your parents or they might want to tell your parents. If you make it clear, don't tell my parents and just, they will be there to listen to you. They will be able to give you advice and people that you can talk to about it. The other good thing about educational facilities is most of them have a school counsellor. It is their job to listen to you. They get paid to listen to you and your problems. They go, that is their job. So if you can talk to them, then do. You might be worried they're going to tell your parents, but just, they are there to help you. They are professional people, just like therapists and doctors. Speaking of doctors, you can also tell your doctor. Doctors usually have this confidentiality thing where they are not allowed to tell anybody else. You can make a doctor's appointment yourself. Just go there and say, look, I feel really low. I feel suicidal. I feel worth it. Just tell them the truth and then they'll be able to decide, you know, well, give their opinion on whether or not you have depression. If you do, in their opinion, they can help you out. However, I have never taken antidepressants in my life, so I can't honestly give you a judgment on that subject. Some people say they make you feel numb. Uh, some people say they do help, but they block out all feeling whatsoever. 
I can't tell you about that. If you can't tell anyone face to face, there are helplines that are set up to help people. Um, I've never phoned one. Again, I can't really give you my my opinion on them, but the idea is they are there, they are set up to help people. And I know a lot of them will just say, tell your parents, but it's someone that you can vent to. It's someone that you can say, look, I feel like crap. I want to die. Things like that. You know, if you feel that way, you can tell just, just being able to vent to somebody that is listening to you is a step in the right direction. And if you still don't feel like you can tell any one of those options, you have friends. We might not have friends. I didn't have many friends. But if you have someone in your school or your job that you are close to, just they will be a lot more understanding than you think as well. You might think they're going to laugh or think you're a bit of a weirdo, but if they are your close friends, they will care and they will listen. And if they don't, they're not your friends. I'm sorry. Okay, so moving on from the subject of telling other people, if you still don't feel like you are up to telling anyone, you can, for the time being, help yourself. And um, there are a couple of things that I used to do um, to make myself feel a bit better. It didn't always work. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. But if I can help you in any way, then I will. I used to have a saying um, that I took from a White Stripes lyric. Might be a bit cheesy, but if you repeat this when you're having anxiety attacks or anything like that, okay. I must be fine because my heart's still beating. Just repeat that to yourself and think about it. I'm fine, I'm alive, my heart is beating, therefore I am fine. You might not believe it, but if you keep saying it to yourself, you eventually, you know, it calmed me down a lot. Um, and it just kind of reminds you that life is going on. Life, Time is constantly moving as you are feeling this way, and eventually all things come to an end and you won't always feel this way. It is, it's, it's, a, it's a mental state, yes but it's also a phase, and when I say phase, I don't mean, oh, you'll grow out of it, I just mean that it's a phase in your life which eventually, I think, you know, you can overcome. The last real good piece of advice that I can give you guys, um, besides being cheesy and saying, you'll get better, it gets better, the only other thing I can really give you is what I used to do, which is make a list of things that you'd like to do in your future. At the moment, your present sucks, your past might have really sucked, but your future is up to you. Um, the future is still in your hands and you can control it, which is the most powerful thing a human can do. You can control the future! Ah! I used to make a list of things that I'd like to do or see or achieve in my future and just look at it and think, oh my god, I have all of this to live for and do in my 80 years. I'm already a quarter of the way from my life. I blinked and I'm, I'm, eight, I'm, I nearly said I'm 80 then. I feel 80 sometimes. This is what I'm saying. You'll be surprised at all the things that you'll want to do. For instance, I will give you um, a couple of things on one of my lists, if you like. I want to reach 1 million subscribers. Might not, but it's a nice goal to work for. I want to go to WrestleMania just once, you know. I want to release an album, I want to travel first class on a plane. See, little things like that, little things that you want to experience. I have a whole list of stuff that, like, you can't see it. Still. I even said things like, I want to get married and have kids. I want to see my kids grow up, you know. And the last one I wrote is, I want to make my parents proud. You know, there's, there's so much that I want to do, little things. And once you see those things written down, you just think, yeah, I'm going to make that happen. Turn your anger and hatred that you have for the people around you into passion for you to take with you and just, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. One thing that I would also say, just before I leave you to think about all of this, is one of the key things to getting out of depression is to become selfish. Bear with me when I say this. Um, by which I mean be less selfless, don't keep doing things for other people, work and focus on what you want, work on your goals. Um, if someone's being horrible to you, if a friend's being bitchy, drop them. Um, if someone says you can't do anything, drop them. Um, if someone says, oh well, you don't do that, do this for me, no, fuck it, do something for you. If it's, if it's something that's affecting your life, you do it. Do what you want to do, and you feel so much better. You won't keep saying, oh, I'm sorry to people. Just say no, I'm not doing it. And when I say stay strong, fight back, which is my motto, SSFB, when I say fight back, I mean literally fight back. Like, you know, if someone's giving you shit, you give them shit back. You know, I'm not saying become a complete arsehole like me. I'm just saying don't be a doormat and instantly you'll feel so much better about your own life. I think really that's all I can say about depression without becoming very tactless and seeming almost ignorant, so I will leave it there. Um, if you have any comments on what I've said, if you think I'm completely wrong and, you know, approaching it really badly, then feel free to criticise down below. Um, but hopefully this has pushed you guys to realise that there is help out there, you can get it, and if you really don't want to, you can start helping yourself until you feel brave enough to get that help. Don't suffer alone. Don't have depression on and off for seven years. Okay? Promise me. Now oh, I'm gonna go.
I shall see you guys on Monday or for next week's Feel Good 101. Bye!